right on what I lied to you. King of Hearts, Shane Richard. Joker in the pack, Vic Reeves. And their team captain, David Mitchell. And facing them tonight, she's double barrel. It's Tana Palmer Tomkinson. He's double parked. It's Reese Thomas. And their team captain, Lee Mack. But first, please go and say me joy for your host, Angus Deaton. Good evening and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that has all the honesty of a GMTV phone-in. Uh, <laughs> these days we sometimes say that lying is being economical with the truth, although being generous with the bullshit is another way of putting it. <laughs> uh, some have built careers on being brutally honest, like Simon Cowell, for example, so likely signs that someone's telling the truth would be if they pull their trousers up to their man breasts and have their <laughs> hair cut by the council. <laughs> Which brings us to our first round, Home Truths, in which one of our panellists reads out a statement about themselves and the other team applies these sort of dubious decision-making skills that's led them to appearing on this show to establish if it's true or not. Remember, as they turn over the card, the panellists have no idea whether they'll be confronted with a familiar home truth or a brand new lie, as Shane will now prove. Shane, oh, OK. Shock us all. Here we go. I missed a visit from George Michael because I was eating at a harvester. <laughs> right, truth or lie, Lee's mm. team. Can, can you uh, slightly expand on that story? No, what it was, um, it was about three years ago, and I think it was a, a I think George Michael was going to be paying a visit to Albert Square. I wasn't there because I was having an unlimited salad and a free bread roll. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be confused with Toby Carvery, because you don't get an unlimited salad there. Um, and I missed his visit. I honestly thought Toby Carvery was one of the actors in EastEnders. Am I getting confused? <laughs> You're thinking of Todd Carty. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Some, uh, <laughs> what was he visiting for? To be honest, I think he was celebrating his 40th birthday. What, by visiting by Albert, Albert Square? Square. <laughs> no, he, he was a big fan of the show. And he was hoping to come and meet uh, Cat and Alfie, which of course, and Jesse was there who played Cat. And I wasn't there that day. Did he definitely visit Albert Square? Was he just like driving around off his face, parked the car, yeah, and exactly. confused it with Hampstead? Yeah, yeah. No, he might have been off his face when he made the appointment and then decided that he ought to honour it. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, I'm going to have to push you for an answer. I think he's telling the truth. I can see George Michael getting a big fat spliff, go to Albert Square, him going to Harvester, <laughs> and off we go. Ooh. I'm actually surprised you've heard of Harvester Tower, to be honest. I'm just pretending I know what it is. <laughs> But you are the team captain, Lee, so what's your decision? I, I, I think that could be true, actually, cos uh, Shane's like... In, in the <laughs> nicest possible way, you look like the kind of bloke that would eat at Harvester. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is a nice way. I would, you would, <laughs> David wouldn't, would he? I have been to a Harvest. Yes. Have you eaten? <laughs> <laughs> you went as an experiment. <laughs> you didn't go for lunch, you sort of went... It'd be like going to the zoo for you, wouldn't it? No, I had lunch there. OK. Right. And, you know, sorry salad. if that doesn't, you know, conform to your views of me as some kind of... Scientist Duke bastard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, well, I, I think what do you think, Reese? I think, well, I, I think it's true, actually. Well, they're yeah, we all, all saying think that's true. true. We'll go for true. Okay, they're saying true. Shane, put us out of our misery. Uh, it is, in fact, true. Yeah! <laughs> well done. Love it. Uh, congratulations, it is true. Uh, Shane did miss a visit from George Michael because he was eating at a harvester. Uh, last year, George Michael was found off his face on drugs, slumped in a car in Hyde Park. It's come to something when exposing yourself in a public toilet was the good old days. <laughs> so, our next revelation, Reese. My bed used to belong to John Nettles. <laughs> from Bergerac. From but that John And Nettles, from uh, right. Midsummer Murder. Where did you get the bed? John Nettles. John Nettles. Oh, no, how, what, did, you, what, did, you, did you come round to the house and say, listen, oh, you don't I, know I, me, I but... actually ordered it. I, for fun, I got lots of famous, famous detectives' uh, items from uh, eBay. So I got John Nettles' bed. Yeah. I got uh, Morse's, uh, you know, <laughs> foot, foot spa. <laughs> <laughs> I got, um... Got tag, taggots, uh, death certificate. Didn't get it. No, didn't get it. <laughs> I know this is a lie, because... Only yesterday, I was on, the, on eBay looking for Poirot's tumble dryer, <laughs> and I couldn't find it's I anyone, it. any detective stuff anywhere. I got him. It's because I got him. Do you sleep, right. you sleep in, or is it in John Nettles' in... bed? Yeah, uh, I think this one dated from about 1987, when Bergerac, when he was uh, in Jersey. <laughs> in right. Uh -huh. See, 
So is this, um, a, is this, <laughs> is this a prop bed? So it's not John Nettles' bed. No, no. It's Bergerac's mm. bed. Yes, Bergerac's bed. There so it's slightly wrong. I, I, Nettles has never spent a night in it. Out of it now, right, it? David, I'm going to have to push you for an answer. It's a lie. It's a lie. They're saying it's a lie. Reese. It is a lie. Yes, it's a lie. Reese's bed did not once belong to Bergerac star John Nettles, although his bed has lots in common with Bergerac. It's wooden, it sags in the middle, and no sooner have you got into it, then you start to drop off. <laughs> so our next revelation. Vic, reveal all, if you would. Oh, yes, of course I can. I have patented a device that stops cats jumping on your lap. <laughs> What kind of device? Uh, it's a... well... Ah. What it is... It's, it's a spring yes. which you attach to your John Dory with a platform on it. <laughs> and if, if the cats jump on it, then they immediately spring off. <laughs> so, for instance, if you're I'm watching TV, it. listening to the radio, and you don't want a cat on your lap, which is quite often the case, <laughs> the, the platform springs it straight off. How do you patent something? So if I want to go about painting something, I've made. You write, yeah. you, you send a letter in blood to the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so what did and you call it? And when it gets a stamp sent back by the winged messenger, you know you patented. <laughs> What's the name of the product? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's actually got a name, to be honest. Is it name well, pending? Well, then how can you paint it? You yeah. don't need to. It's just said the thing that th throws cats <laughs> off your lap. And when the Queen heard about it, she was on it like a shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's on the, on the device me. or on the. <laughs> <laughs> Does it come in a box? <laughs> well, it device. actually hasn't been. To, to be honest, it hasn't, it's not I, out been, yet. I, I, sent, I sent it off. And it hasn't been patented. Oh, so the bit where you said you patented it. Patented, yes, but pat pending. Oh, it's pending. Okay. I've got a lot of things that are pat pending. My eel tube. <laughs> for instance. What's an eel tube? Uh, well, an eel tube is so it's basically it's a, a cardboard tube like that that you can you, so you put the eel down one end, <laughs> and the, the amazing thing is, yeah, it comes out the other end. <laughs> Brilliant, and that's that's the brilliant part. Right, is that Pat pending? Pat hasn't replied yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you veering towards? What do you think, Tara? I'm okay. going to just say whatever you say. <laughs> OK. Take all your clothes off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. It's a lie, do you lie. think? What do you think, Ruth? Terrible lie. A terrible okay, lie. Not saying it's not just a lie, lie, but it's a terrible lie. Yes. <laughs> Tell us immediately. <laughs> it's a lie. It's a terrible lie. It is a terrible lie. Uh, Vic has never patented a device that stops cats jumping on your lap. In fact, there already is a patented device to stop cats jumping on your lap. It's called a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and so, with all the serenity of a beached whale, we move on to round two, the Ring of Truth, in which I liberally throw out top draw celebrity uh, trivia for the panellists to declare if the fact has the whiff of truth or the grim odour of falsehood. Lee's team, some Blue Peter action for you. Think of rabbits and most people think of carrots. Think of carrots and most people think of food. Until now, because for one group of children from West Hampstead in London, the common carrot, not to mention the plain old parsnip, has found a new use. And what a turnip for the books it is! No. Yes, a hark back to the great recorder shortage of 1996. <laughs> to the days when we made our own entertainment, and it was shite. <laughs> uh, incidentally, any viewers wondering about the name of that vegetable, it was Katie Hill. <laughs> <laughs> so unfair, she's delightful. Uh, so here's the fascinating fact then for Lee and co. Uh, Sting has recorded an album uh, using only vegetables for instruments. It's called The Sound of the Ground. <laughs> or has he? So, are we trying to say if it's true or not? Well done. <laughs> <laughs> well done. We're halfway through and you've got the rules. <laughs> um, what are his favourite vegetables well. that he used? Uh, the xylophone That's was not a the vegetable, one. That's, that's not a vegetable, isn't it? Caught you out. 
the xylophone was made out of root vegetables, for example, carrots and parsnips. And you're trying to convince us that if you hit a carrot or a parsnip, it sounds like a xylophone. There are wood xylophones. But it is the kind of thing Sting yeah, would but do. wood's a hard, very solid thing. I mean, a carrot's a bit more... Got a bit, got a bit more give in it. Oh, you love a bit of carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that if you stick a thing in the end and blow a carrot, it'll make a tune. But I can't believe you can make a xylophone out of root vegetables. Yes, but I can completely believe that someone such as Sting would go and do something so earthy like yeah. that. That's exactly why Sting, a ref any reference to Sting, is fundamentally unfair in a game like this. It's about you lying. Think, yeah. You can believe anything of Sting. Exactly. But Sting was what the kind of person we had Stalin for. <laughs> <laughs> Who also, incidentally, made up his own name. <laughs> but, um, so I just sort of feel, I kind of feel, I don't think we need, should, need to engage with Sting. You know, we should say, no, no, no more Sting questions, because it's impossible to judge. Uh, Lee, what is your considered opinion? <laughs> false. Reece, do you false, think it's false, false or true? You think it's false? Really? Yes, yeah. really. I do think it's kind of true. One true, one false. Which way are you going to go? OK, go. I'm going to say that's true. He's Great. saying it's true, and it is indeed a lie. Oh! <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Sting has never recorded an album using only vegetables, but he has released an album that he claimed was a songs that were from the 16th century. Now, these included Standeth Not So Close To Me and Message In A Flagon. <laughs> <laughs> so, to David's team, who have this to ponder, Al Gore can hypnotise chickens. <laughs> is this gospel or garbage? Uh, well, I imagine hypnotising chickens is quite easy, as hypnotising animals goes. Because the chickens are quite <laughs> stupid, You'll probably get them transfixed on, on <laughs> something dangly, shiny bit of metal quite easily. And, and who's to say whether they're really hypnotised? Actually, they look quite vacant, even <laughs> when they're, you know, totally... I mean, in a way, how much can you say that a chicken is ever in full possession of its faculties? <laughs> Rare. Well, at what point, at what point would Al Gore, who at one point was on the verge of becoming a world leader, would sit down and go, hey, honey, guess what I can do? I can hypnotise chickens. But how, but, but, what, what, what do you, how do you find that out? Well, it'd be a bit of fun for him on a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you can hypnotise chickens, I've done it, and I've hypnotised cattle as well, with chalk. With draw chalk? A line down, in front of them, draw a line down, they follow it, and they get, and they get mesmerised, but the, their eyes follow it, and they, they don't know where to go, so they stay there looking at it. Uh, uh, what, is that hypnotising or confusing the fuck out of them? Yes, <laughs> of course it is. He comes from a place where people, you know, spend their lives hypnotising chickens. Uh, David, which way are you tending? I think it's true. No, you don't think it's no, true? I, I think we go with true. And they're saying it's true, and I can tell you that it is absolutely true. <laughs> yes. Al Gore can hypnotise chickens. Al swings a watch back and forth in front of the chickens and in a slow voice repeats, you are in a field in the countryside, not a tiny box in a factory with your legs broken. <laughs> and when Al Gore lost the 2000 election to George Bush, some said it was because voters wanted a stronger right-wing presence. Uh, some said it was because the ballot in Florida was fixed, whereas others said they couldn't vote for a man who spent his time fucking around with chickens. <laughs> So, at the end of all that, it's David's team who are standing proud, boasting as they do, four points. Oh! Thank you, And so, to our next round, This Is My, which, like Paris Hilton's jail time, is barely a sentence. Each of David's team will claim that they are somehow linked to tonight's mystery guest, but only one of them will be telling the truth. So, please, welcome this week's special guest person, Richard. Uh, so, Shane, uh, uh, what's Richard to you? Uh, Richard's my... <laughs> he's my uh, cousin and he lives down in Cornwall. And this is the first time he's been out of Cornwall. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we are. Uh, Vic, perhaps you'd like to tell us how you know Richard? Um, Richard's my butcher and I'm his official sausage taster. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And finally, David, your relationship with uh, this Richard. This is Richard, and he's illustrating my forthcoming children's book, The Lonely Lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> so there you are. A uh, Cornish cousin, if we believe Shane, a butcher to the stars, according to Vic, or a children's illustrator of David's book. OK, what part of Cornwall are you from? Uh, you can't you're... ask him, he can't talk. Oh, OK. I mean, <laughs> the rules of the game, not okay. because he's from Cornwall. <laughs> okay. Yeah, ask it to Shane. Shane, what part of Cornwall is your friend from? Uh, cousin? It's my cousin, down near uh, Penzance, Lansdowne, a little place called Larkin Grove. What? And he's your cousin? 
Yeah. Called Richard. Yeah. It's called Richard Richie. No, my real name's not Richie. What's, What's your, your real name? name? I'm not telling you. It's all in the book, still available. Rags to Richie. <laughs> Presumably, from, from the title, yeah, it must be yeah, Rags. Rags. It's Rags to Rags. 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 story. Oh, yeah. It's a fantastic yeah. story of changing your name by deed pop. <laughs> His real name is, 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 is Megan. It's Richard Megan. That's rubbish. OK. If he's your cousin from Penzance, what does he do in Cornwall? He likes it. Well, I don't know if he's still doing. He used to have a garage down there, and he used to look after cars. But I don't know if he does it anymore because I've been down there for a while. This, uh, this book, David. Could you just tell us a little bit about the Lonely Lighter? <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I could. No, it's it autobiographical. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell! That's a, <laughs> yes, that's a low blow. Yes, it's about. <laughs> it's about a, a desolate building standing alone <laughs> is finally demolished. <laughs> No, very bright. Sorry? It's a positive. You're very bright, but very lonely. Y so yes, it's quite bright. Yeah. Shining my light pointlessly into the dark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only way I get any human company is if I turn the light off and people <laughs> crash onto the rocks below me. Uh, no, and other chat up lines from it's, David. It's, yeah, not, it's, uh, it's not that. It's no, it's great... about. There's a character uh, in the sketch show I do called uh, Sir Digby Chicken Caesar. Uh, we've been commissioned to write a series of sort of, well, a kind of illustrated storybook. What was he doing and in the, the lighthouse? First one is going to be called the Lonely Lighthouse. And he's the illustrator to your book. How many chapters are there in your book? Well, I haven't written it yet. <laughs> right. What, how does it end? Well, as I say, I haven't written it yet. <laughs> how does it begin? He hasn't written it yet. Well, if you haven't written it, he clearly hasn't illustrated it. So no, yes. exactly. No, You're out. Going... Guys, the drawings come first and then he'll make up the story. No, he's, going to, he's going to be illustrated. All these things get arranged no, in no, advance. No, no, I want to move back to the sausages. <laughs> <laughs> the butcher wine. Okay. Yes. Vic, could Aren't you tell us more about the sausages? Yes, this is Richard and I'm his official sausage tester. He makes the sausages and I test them out. He, he, you know, in the depths of dark, the darkness of the night, he hangs a bag of sausages on yeah, my... Yeah. Doorknob, and I. <laughs> take is this, this extracts from the Lonely Lighthouse? <laughs> Where's his butchers? In my village where I live. Where Which is, is what? That? We want to know. Charing, in Kent. Okay. And, and he's the local. So it, it, anyway, I, I test the sausages. Uh, it's a very official, um, you know, position to hold. It was before held by the woman on the hill, <laughs> who died of melancholy. <laughs> What's your favourite? He does a good beef and horseradish. But we're going we're to make zebra sausages and uh, alligator snake sausages. The, the, the zebra ones will be black and white. One sausage black, one sausage white. Oh, it's like a Paul McCartney song. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it, is this person uh, Shane's Cornish cousin, Vic's sausage provider, <laughs> or David's literary illustrator? Well, I, I, I think Vic is uh, talking out of his backside. Really? No, I don't. I, well, okay. well, I think the clue... I mean, it might just be me. Call me old-fashioned. Zebra sausage. I mean... <laughs> no, I... I'm not I, suspicious. I'm, I don't know what I, it I, was. Do, I would go with the Cornwall one, personally. OK. So okay. you're veering towards... I'm veering towards David, cos he did a... E, e, e... Well, the lighthouse. Yes, because I... He hasn't even written the book. <laughs> well, I believe David would read a write a book about lonely lighthouses. <laughs> What do you do I think it's definitely Shane Ritchie's cousin. I do too. Yeah. OK, Lee, well, we, you're going to uh, have to either well, I mean, overrule I think it's or David, go with. But they've overruled me, so I'll say uh, it's Shane's cousin. OK, you're saying it's Shane's cousin. Richard, perhaps you'd like to tell us who you really are. I am Vic's butcher. Oh. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, he is. He's Vic's butcher. <laughs> Richard, sorry, sorry. Do you do zebra sausages? We've spoken about it for the last year, haven't we, Richard? We have. You have to yeah. bear in mind that Vic does lead a very, very strange life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us, Richard. Richard. Well done. Great! Yes, Vic and uh, Richard together make the best sausages in Kent. Uh, one of Vic's duties is to trim off the nasty gristle, veins and cartilage and ensure that they all go into the sausages. How <laughs> many uh, people get on well with their sausage tasters? Elton John married his. So... <laughs> Check on the score shows Lee's team are starting to look distinctly inadequate. Behind as they are, 5-2. <laughs>
Let's go to the round you've all been waiting for, the last one. In this quick-fire game, both teams have uh, more revelations or rubbish to divulge from the as-yet-unseen cards in front of them. Plus, some of our panellists might be asked about an object which they will claim is a personal possession. The other side must then declare the veracity of that claim and also say whether it's true or not. Uh, David's team are what's known in the business as winning, so Lee's team need all the points they can get starting now. David. <laughs> possession. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Uh, right. Ooh. OK, this box contains the only gift I've ever been sent by a fan. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it? It's some socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's, some, it's some socks with various slogans. What are the slogans? What are the slogans? The slogans are fast cars, birds, footy, <laughs> which I believe is short for football. <laughs> Beers and curries. <laughs> so, Boy, as did you they tell by someone who knows me very, very well. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that's my whole thing. Sort of. right. <laughs> did you get a letter with it? Yes. What did it say? Uh, Die. <laughs> <laughs> I do not. Yes. It was a, just a nice, I like your work. Man or woman? Letter. Woman. Did you write back to her and thank her? I didn't, no. So you didn't thank her? God, you're so ungrateful. Why, would you write back to a fan? Yeah, I, well, I just... answer all mine. Do you? Do you? Well, yep. somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you never wear these? Yeah. Um, well, because they've got um, yes, but fast really... cars, birds, footy, beers and curries yeah, but... written on them. Sure... And I, I favour socks which have nothing written but on them. But surely the irony could have been fabulous. Where did you get them? Yeah. I think about two years ago. But you do, you end up using, I don't care who you are, you, you always would, you always need a pair of socks. Two years on, you do need them. Do you know what, actually, really... all my socks seem to have sinisterly worn out at the same time. <laughs> all of them. And now you've got any socks left. Well... <laughs> there you go! That's, the yours. That's definitely a lie. You can have birds and footy. I'll wear them all. I want curries. Shame us. <laughs> actually, I do actually you do as you like, like curries. <laughs> So what do you think, Lee? It's a lie, isn't it? Well, I think it's definitely a lie. OK, oh, lie, lie. OK, lie. they all say it's a lie. It is, David. in fact, true. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, it's true. Those socks are the only gift David has ever been sent by a fan. When women threw knickers at Tom Jones, he'd wipe the sweat from his chest and throw them back. David, however, booked a walking holiday in the Cotswolds. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Tara. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, are you there? Yep, sorry Good. about that. Okay. Yep. And Q Tara. I have been shopping in Sainsbury's wearing nothing but a trench coat. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you just want to. See that long pause after she said it when we all went. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do this thing? Because um, it was just like a joke with a friend. It was just a silly girl thing we just decided to do about ten did years ago. Did you have ago. any shoes on? Yeah. I mean, I had a trench coat on. It's not, like, completely offensive. I wasn't going out like Jodie Marsh. <laughs> of course not, no. Um, Is yeah. that rude? I mean, quite frankly, I'm, half the time I go down to the local place in my pyjamas and just buy something, so I can't really so see the I. big deal. You go to the shop in your pyjamas? Yeah. Don't say it like it's normal. <laughs> I did it, actually, today. I put a coat on over the me nightie and go down the shop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's getting worse. You wear a nightie. I do, actually, yeah. <laughs> um, this is all fascinating. Uh, we um, think this is true. David, yeah. do you believe? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is true, okay. yes. It's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Um, next. <coughs> Lee. I once had a full body search at Miami Airport after making a joke about Ronald Reagan. <laughs> Firstly, what was the joke? Well, I think joke's an exaggeration. It was more of a comment. Oh, did you say? Well, a, yeah. I said, I think he's a bit of a, a warmonger, and instead of searching me, you should search your own country for <laughs> more nuclear weapons than Reagan's admitting to. Now, <laughs> I'd like to point out that I was <laughs> very drunk after a long flight and right. thought that would arouse at least a tickly smile from the big butch moustached, rubber-gloved lunatic <laughs> <laughs> that stood before me. But no! <laughs> How long's the flight? <laughs> Sorry? How long's the flight? Oh, now, you talk to a man who'd had two bottles of scotch. I would say, uh, we, we stopped, actually, halfway. Where two minutes. <laughs> halfway? <laughs> in the sea. Halfway. 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 halfway at the Ascension Islands, because... Uh, <laughs> 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 I actually stopped. Uh, I stopped, when I say halfway, I was on a round-the-world trip. <laughs> 
So where were you flying from? Where were you flying I was from? flying from <laughs> Moscow to Miami. I stopped, <laughs> I stopped off. This is true. I stopped halfway in London. I'm saying roughly halfway. After about yeah. four or five hours, I stopped in London. I was doing a short round the world trip for about a short, short trip around the world. It's all relative. If you go from Moscow to Miami and you're going around the world, but you, relatively, you went Moscow, it's a London, short trip. London, Miami. It's shorter than going around the world. That's the whole trip. I was it's doing part a... of going around the world. <laughs> it is. It is. Many people's round the world twi trip is well. Yeah, literally. I went around. I went London to London. I was never going. Around, <laughs> around the world. Sat I went there watching movies. I went from Moscow to London. And then yeah. London, we Miami. We refuelled, and then I went from London to Miami. To Miami, yes. At which point, I drunk lots of scotch, got off my face, got off the plane at Miami, and a big, butch, mustachioed American stuck his fingers up my rectum. <laughs> now, which part, which part of that story doesn't sound convincing? <laughs> Right. Lie, lie, lie. Lie, lie. Right, lie. they're saying lie. Lie. Lee, Lock him. Tell us it's a lie. It's not a lie. Yes. Can I just say to the makers of this programme that how the hell, after making a joke about Ronald Reagan, I'm supposed to write that on the spot, am I? It was a great gag, though, wasn't it? Oh, what a brilliant killer that was. Ronald Reagan's got more <laughs> nuclear weapons than he lets on to. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm here all weekend. Enjoy the chicken. <laughs> It is a lie. It was a lie. Uh, Lee did not get uh, a full body search at customs after mocking Ronald Reagan. He got it after requesting one when booking the tickets. Uh, next, <coughs> Shane. Um, female admirers used to send me timetables showing when their husbands would be out. Did you, did you ever pay them a visit? <laughs> um, funny enough, some of them, yes. And when was this? This was it when I was um, in the early 90s when I was doing a soap powder campaign. Uh, oh, the, not, the, the doorstep yes, challenge. The doorstep oh, challenge. The doorstep yeah. challenge. Yeah. Oh. And uh, what happened? I'd turn up at a, a hotel and the, the word would go around if I was in that particular town. Someone would slip a note on the door and it'd say, Listen, just to let you know, uh, my husband won't be in at this particular time and I'd love to see you on your own. Yeah, so that's not Did... really a sort of sexual thing. She just wants some free powder. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think there is? It's a lie, it's a lie, because I've read Rags to Richie about seven times, and that, that would have been a story in it, and I, that wasn't in the book. You've oh. not read the book! I have, seven times. Have you? Shut it's up. the only book I've read, that and The Hungry Caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> and there are more holes in your book. <laughs> that's a good point. OK, yes. I would, we'll, we're going to say that's a true story. No, 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 we're not. It's all on you, it's a lie, it's a lie. They're saying it's a lie. OK, it's in fact true. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it's true. Uh, Shane did receive timetables from admirers telling him uh, when their husbands would be out. It worked like clockwork. 7.01, <laughs> arrive at the house. 7.03, begin sex. 7.04, post-coital cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which nasty buzzing noise means at the end of the show, it's David's team who have proved themselves to be better people, having annihilated Lee's team 10-3. <laughs> And we leave you with the results of a recent survey which shows that journalists are the profession that tells most lies. This teaches us two things. Firstly, not to believe everything you read in the paper. And secondly, that estate agents must have even lied on that survey. <laughs> Good night.